these extra gloves. My hands are starting to get sweaty. Sure is cold outside, which means that it's perfect for feeling and sensing this cold that we're going to be talking about. It's interesting how my skin and your skin acts like little thermometers to tell us what temperature it is. But if you measure the inside temperature, my internal temperature is going to take a little bit. Hold on. It's a 97.7. That's way warmer than it is out here. So why? Why do I feel cold if I'm doing all right on the inside? I mean, I feel uncomfortable. I don't want to be here for long. And also how? How do I feel that? How do I feel cold? There's something molecular that's going on between this temperature out here and the skin cells on my hands. So there's some kind of translation between the temperature and these skin cells, and then my brain. It's something crazy. So let's see what we can find out about being cold and why. Every day, our brain is bombarded with information about the world around us. Our five senses help give meaning to all of this information, and they are sight, hearing, I came in like a wrecking ball. Touch. Ouch. Smell and taste. <sighs> Hi, my name is Jillian Johnson, and I graduated from CU Boulder in 2012 with a bachelor's in neuroscience. What I expect that you're already familiar with is that you at least know the sensation of being cold. It's kind of necessary. You know that humans are also made up of individual cells, and these cells work together to make up the whole individual. Also, the brain is the controller of this whole machine. It gets the information and then sends out its response. Let's define cold, because it's a little different than what most people think. It is not the opposite of hot. There is no such thing. It is actually the absence of heat. So what is heat then? Heat is energy. This energy is seen in the movement and motion of molecules. The faster things move, the hotter and more energy they have. The slower things move, the less hot and less energy they have. So when we feel cold, we are actually feeling a decrease in motion, less heat, and more simply, feeling less hot. By the science guy. The mountains are icy, but they've got motion of molecules. have heat. Things like snow and icy mountain lakes and glaciers, they've got heat. Anything with molecules has heat. It's just that the molecules in cold things are moving more slowly than the molecules in warm things. You with me? We ask ourselves, why do we feel cold? And how do we feel cold? Let's be scientists ourselves and first look at why, and second, how. Why we feel cold. There are some major evolutionary benefits for feeling cold. We prefer heat over cold. Why is that? Normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is warmer than our typical living environment. The farther our body temperature is, in comparison to the colder outside temperature, the faster we lose heat. But also, we don't want it to be as hot as we are, because then our natural release of heat as a byproduct overheats us. And that's why we prefer a happy 70 degrees. Why does our body stay at this particular temperature? Our body is a machine that works best at this level. Our most efficient state is at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit due to the nature of movement of molecules and cells. If it's too hot, things fall apart. Too cold and things will slow down too much to even interact. 80% of our energy intake is used to maintain temperature and metabolic activities. So let's take a closer look into his brain when he's cold. This is where the reward and punishment centers come in. This is located in the middle of your brain, and when we are cold, the brain actually punishes us, making us feel uncomfortable 
frustrated or agitated because we are using more energy. The brain knows there is a limited supply. These feelings then serve as motivation to go inside, put on warmer clothes, or start a fire, even if that means temporarily going back out into the cold to gather wood. Heat is that crucial. You may wish at times to be unable to feel cold, because then you could be like this guy, who could just chill outside in the cold in a pair of shorts. But if you were, your physical body would still freeze. Whether you feel the painful cold or not, all of the cellular processes will eventually stop working due to frozen mechanisms or lack of fuel, and you will die. In evolutionary terms, Mr. Grumpy Pants is the fittest, not because he survived, but because he lives longer and therefore has more time to have more Grumpy Pant kids, which is more kids than not cold dead guy will have. Now, back to the brain to discuss how we feel cold. We find the cells responsible for communication are called neurons. This is the simple anatomy of a neuron. It has a cell body, dendrites that act like arms that receive chemical information. It also has an axon that functions as the road for signals to travel down and terminals where information is then sent out. How signals are sent over the body. These neurons are, are not just found in the brain, but all over the human body. They are commonly called nerve cells or fibers. These take in information and pass it on to the neighbor neuron. Now let's look closer at the signal. Here is one neuron's terminal on the left sending chemical information to the right dendrite of a neighbor neuron who receives it. Now zoom in to this reception of chemicals even closer. Here you see the receptors of chemical information. These receptors are composed of protein and anchored to the membrane of that neuron. Let's talk about how one of these proteins are formed. So you begin with a collection of amino acids that are then linked together in a chain. This chain then begins to twist and fold due to bonds that are forming, and afterwards the folds become attracted to each other and form a bundle, which can then attract other nearby protein bundles, and then you have a full protein. The function of any cell's membrane is to keep things that need to stay out, out and things that need to stay in, in. There are some things that can pass freely through this membrane. But for all the things that can't, this membrane protein can help. A protein in the membrane acts like a gatekeeper for those chemicals that don't pass freely. Some things are allowed in or out through this protein, but it is selective. So here's what we know about how we feel cold. Heat can change the shape of receptor protein and then anything can get through it. This is called denaturing. Proteins in your eggs do this when you fry them for breakfast, but unlike your eggs, sometimes proteins can renature and have restored function. Also, interestingly, with cold sensing neurons, they can detect the sensation of cold chemically through things such as mint and the chemical menthol, which is found in products such as Vicks Vapor Rub. These are able to denature the receptor protein and signal can be activated. Now, what we don't know is how these chemicals relate to the temperature drop. Unlike adding heat or adding chemicals, cold is just a decrease of heat. So when we ask, how do we feel cold? The truth is, science doesn't know. There are actually a lot of mysteries still. So, I guess we get to be scientists and we get to take what we know and make a hypothesis about something that we don't know. But let's do some scientific methodology and review what we do know and make a hypothesis of what we don't. Hot and cold are simply just changes in temperature so that they should generally have the same effect. And these chemicals lead to the same sensation of cold as temperature drop does. So the denaturing of protein receptors due to chemicals must be the same as the denaturing due to temperature drop. And there you have it. That's our hypothesis. Research hasn't proven it yet, but we've got some brilliant minds on the task. And maybe you could be the next to join them. Got any good ideas yourself? Well, until then, stay warm, my friends. Or cold. <gasps>